Generally, I tend to listen to lots of music. Most of you know this. I'll go from ranting about the beauty behind Yvette Young from Covet's incredible guitar riffs to my love of Playboy Cardi's ignorant sound to crying over a little peep for the fourth time that week. So, yeah, I like music. There are a few bands that I enjoy, however, that are able to stay existent for almost 15 years, despite the only two members staying throughout the entire course of their history being the guitarist and the drummer, and still consistently being able to put out not only listenable albums, but great ones at that. Okay, maybe I can only think of one of those that are like that, but nonetheless, collectively, Dance Gavin Dance has released one EP, seven studio albums, and two live albums, and all of them are able to hold the same quality as the previous, if not improving on it. So, for those who care, here is the very, very complicated history of Dance Gavin Dance. Dance Gavin Dance has been described as everything from postcard core, progressive or math rock, screamo, emo, etc. Their sound is something that I personally really enjoy, as it shifts from using clean to unclean vocals in pretty much every song, which gives it a really nice melodic sound that gets sort of rough around the edges. The band was formed in 2005, originally from guitarist Will Swan, bassist Eric Lodge, and drummer Matt Mingus' previous band Farewell Unknown. Singer Johnny Craig left his previous band Ghost Runner on 3rd, which is often cited for drug problems, and was also joined by unclean vocalist John Mess. Sean O'Sullivan was also there on rhythm guitar. The band self-produced their first EP, Whatever I Say is Royal Ocean, which was re-released through Rise Records on November 14, 2006, which the band is still signed under to this day. This EP set in stone the sound that Dance Gavin Dance was bringing to the table, including songs such as The Robot vs. Heroin Battle of Vietnam, The Importance of Cocaine, and Burning Down the Nicotine Armoire. About six months passed by, and their debut studio album, Downtown Battle Mountain, was released on May 15, 2007, with mint to positive critical review. The album opened with Untitled, an acoustic intro track that immediately transitioned into the song and I told them I invented Times New Roman. The build-up moving into Johnny Craig's soulful, passionate vocals, which was immediately contrasted by John Mess's un unclean screaming, made for a very quick but very captivating introduction to the band. Most of the rest of the album followed the style, with songs like Strawberry Andre, Lemon Meringue Thai, and the backwards pumpkin song pushing angry and sad emotions with a yearning for rage. Finally, however, the album ended with 12 hours, 630 hours, an acoustic track at just 1 minute and 30 seconds, ending with Craig's vocals reaching out at the end. It was a detached from a lot of the rest of the album's sound, creating a very memorable end to the record. This is something that would continue for essentially the rest of the band's discography, but we'll get to that later. Soon, however, the band would begin its long-lasting trouble with member changes. Guitarist Sean O'Sullivan left in August of 2007, being replaced by Zach Guerin. Craig also left in November of 2007, soon being replaced by Kurt Travis as clean vocalist. The band entered the studio in April 2008 to begin recording their self-titled album, also referred to as the Death Star album due to the album art, which would go on to be released August 19, 2008. However, right before the album was released, both John Mess and Eric Lodge left the band, leaving an incomplete group. Will Swan took up the role of unclean vocals, along with his guitar duties, and Jason Ellis took up the role of bass player. The album met mediocre review, as many were still upset with the departure of Craig, and held most everything Kurt did to the same standard, despite them being fairly different in style. However, songs like Uneasy Hearts Way the Most and Caviar, which features Chino Moreno from fucking Deftones, held the album together, leaving a record that most people really only return to for a few of the singles. Their third studio album, Happiness, was released on June 9, 2009, to higher overall critical acclaim than either of their previous releases. However, Jason Ellis had left the band once again right before release, being replaced by Tim Furyk for tour. The album featured the band's most experimental sound pretty much to date, with distorted guitar and heavy synths littered all throughout the album. Songs with heavier intros like NASA and Self Trepanation gave fans a taste of Will Swan on heavy vocals for the first time on a recorded album. Other songs, like Strawberry Swisher Part 1, return to Kurt's lighter, more funk-like sound, making the album extremely varied in sound. The album has been very scarce in physical forms for the past several years, going all the way up on average to about $200 in resale price, until recently when the band restocked their website with physical copies of every release they've made to date, except for one of their live releases. Then, on February 10, 2010, guitarist Zachary Guerin was kicked out of the band from conflict from other members. Around mid-2010, both John Mess and Eric Lodge rejoined the band, with Josh Benton taking up rhythm guitar. In August of the same year, it was announced that Kurt had left in order for Johnny to rejoin the band, also announcing that the next album would be Downtown Battle Mountain 2, with the band effectively returning to their original lineup. Zach rejoined for the tour. John would go on later to say in an interview with Noisy that they were planning on breaking up the band if Johnny hadn't returned for DBM 2. The album was released on March 8, 2011, with mediocre to higher reception. The album featured many of the same soulful belting vocals from Craig as his predecessor, with a more modern sounding guitar. The album showed many fans that the band still had it, with songs like Spooks, 
Thug City, Elder Goose, and Swan Suit being some of the most memorable. It was a hell of a release, and it's one of DGD's most prominent albums. However, this wouldn't be an album release if someone didn't leave again. Johnny Craig announced his departure from the band once again on August 20th, 2012, and explained the next day about the band on a Facebook post as issues once again with rehab and drug abuse. In between the release of Happiness and DBM2, however, the band had released their first live album, Live at Bamboozle 2010, performed May 27, 2010, which was released October 18, 2010, mostly featuring songs from their self-titled and Happiness. Jillian Pearson, formerly a founding member of Tides of Man, took up the role of vocals, along with Josh Benton and Tim Furyk being confirmed as official members in the guitar and bass roles respectively. The next album, Acceptance Speech, was released on October 8, 2013, with mid to high critical acclaim. Critics generally adored Pearson's vocals, saying that he filled Craig's shoes much better than Travis's. Songs like Acceptance Speech, Carve, Doom and Gloom, Demo Team, Death of the Robot with Human Hair, and The Jiggler provided both consistent and new sounds from the band. Yet, once again, someone left. It was announced shortly after the release of their music video for Strawberry Swisher Part 3 that Josh Benton would be leaving to focus on his audio engineering and production career. Before I get into the next album, however, I want to mention one of the band's side projects. While being formed in 2011, Secret Band professionally released both their self-titled EP and album on June 3rd, 2014 and July 31st, 2014. It was effectively Dance Gavin Dance, but without clean vocals, with many of the songs having similar style and rhythm. Others, however, had a more heavy focus. The vocals sounded fresh and raw and has generally received positive reviews. The side project also released two singles on April 11, 2019, with their second full-length album currently being referred to as LP2 or Secret Band set to be released on May 10, 2019. And update on that, it didn't. It actually came out on 420 and it's great. It's, uh, oh my god, I love it. I love it. Anyways, the next album, Instant Gratification, was released on April 14th, 2015, to high critical acclaim. This was the first album in a while to feature a consistent cast of band members, and is also the first to feature the full current lineup. Songs like On the Run, Shark Dad, Legend, Eagles vs. Crows, and Variation provided the same previous style DGD has provided in the past, but just sonically better. And I don't care what you say, Mr. Best Teeth in the fucking game, this is a good album. 2015 was also the 10 year anniversary of the band. The band toured on the aptly named 10 year anniversary tour, with support from A Lot Like Birds, Slaves, and Strawberry Girls, all of which included past members of the band, as well as Deshell, and went into early to mid-2016. There is a live performance of Uneasy Hearts Way the Most from the tour on YouTube, with all the vocalists performing and it's fucking incredible. The band released their second live album, Tree City Sessions, on May 13, 2016. The album was recorded in Sacramento, California and featured 12 tracks, including at least one from every previous release, besides whatever I say is Royal Ocean. Their next studio album, Mothership, was released on October 7th of the same year. It received mid to high critical reviews, even peaking at number 13 on the Billboard 200. It sounded the cleanest they had made at this point, with the production coming together really, really well. Man of the Year, the closing track, was the best that they had made up to this point featuring heavy guitar and bass lines than ever before, the cleanest and uncleanest vocals to date, and and that kinda just left you sitting there, confused as to what the hell just happened. In between Mothership and their next full length, DJD released two singles. The first was a cover of Bruno Mars' That's What I Like for the compilation album Pop Goes Punk Volume 7, which personally I think is infinitely better than the original. The second was called Summertime Gladness, which the band first performed in their set at the Vans Warp Tour 2017. Finally, the band's most recent album, Artificial Selection, was released on June 8th, 2018, to high critical acclaim, peaking at number 15 on the Billboard 200. It has the best songs from them so far, feeling super tight in production, ranging in soft and hard sounds, and the most songs on any album by them to date. Songs like Count Bassey and Care evoked more soft emotional sounds. Others like Flash and Bloodsucker provided you with your quick, heavy punk fix, and Story of My Bros was just, it was just nice. The song Shelf Life featured vocals from previous vocalist Kurt Travis, and the ending track Evaporate featuring Andrew Wells. Speaking of Evaporate, it features reprises from several previous songs, which sounded fucking dope. 
Currently, they are on tour for the album with Periphery, Hail the Sun, Don Broco, and Covet, who is also a great fucking band that I mentioned earlier. Go run their shit up, To Your vet's uh, guitar solos, they, they make me want to punch a fucking wall. I, I love them. I love them. It's, it's so great. Recently, they also released a single titled Headhunter, along with a music video on March 22nd. Jillian confirmed on Twitter that singles will continue to release throughout 2019, as well as an album in 2020, which will also mark their 15th year anniversary. Now, obviously this didn't include everything. They have tons of side projects and other brands and labels, and I completely skipped over Swanfest, but this is the main stuff that you should know. These guys have made some of my favorite music since, like, middle school, which we don't talk about, but nonetheless, I really enjoy them. I highly suggest you go check them out at some point, and if you already have, then you probably already knew most of this anyways. Thanks for watching the video, if you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like and share it with anyone you think may enjoy it. Not really sure how many more videos I can actually churn out before school ends, but I will try to get out at least one or two more. That's all for now from me though, and I will see you all later.